Hey, what is up everyone? It is Rich. All right, happy Friday to everyone. We are getting into 10 minutes with James Bama. This was a Patreon request, as promised, once a week. Probably on Fridays is kind of the goal. Might be get a little loose, but uh, I'm gonna I'll I'll select one uh, recommendation from Patreon and uh, do it. And uh, James Bama is an American illustrator. He passed away um, about two weeks ago, and um, uh, we were just on kind of another track, and so I didn't have time to uh, do a tribute to him. Bama is actually very influential. One person that you'll see a lot of Bama in is Lee Bermejo. Lee and I. Both are huge fans of his work. It's it's photorealistic, maybe in kind of like a Norman Rockwell way. I actually have some beautiful black and white photos of some of his reference uh, model um, stuff. And so, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's just an attention to detail and this um, incredible lighting that um, Bama uses, usually um, from above. They call it butterfly lighting. Um, but uh, Bama was born in New York in 1926, so he's about... Um, he was two years older than Frazetta, but um, worked as an illustrator until the early 70s and then went into fine art and kind of went in almost like an N.C. Wyeth type way where um, he did a lot of Western paintings and stuff like that. He moved he moved from New York out to Wyoming. Sorry, let's get into this. we got 10 minutes with James Bama. Rest in peace, Mr. Bama. You are a badass. I've always wanted to get a Bama book um, and had meant to at Comic-Con and just never um, ended up doing it yet, but... Um, so these, he did um, Doc Savage covers, this where comic book people may have seen his work. But I'm telling you, I mean, look, if you see this right here, I mean, this is so Lee Bermejo. So Lee. <laughs> Lee may see this. What's up, Lee? I love you. Look at this. This is a real famous one. God, man, that is some cool shit. Everyone looks like they're rubbed up with, like, some nice coconut oil. Got the... They call it that butterfly lighting from above. It's just cool shit. Man, it's good. <laughs> um, it is really interesting seeing the black and white reference photos, to be honest, because um, I, I pulled all the art first, and right at the end when I was kind of going, like, all right, I've got about enough images for a 10-minute video, um, I hit this chunk of um, photo reference um, photos, and they're really really beautiful photos um and uh man the folds and stuff like that and just the lighting are so killer so this is nice this is off heritage this piece sold i remember i've i've gone on heritage over a period of years and kind of slowly like cobbled together a collection but uh, i always this is one of the more higher ending auctions so it's usually in there but uh it's a pretty cool piece you know, one thing Frazetta said about doing um trade trade paperback covers or whatever you call it, paperback books and novella covers is it's a very incredibly competitive market and um there were a lot of tricks and gimmicks that the publishers would use to um make things sell someone like james bama kind of almost wins you over just by his um level of skill this is really cool so like as a kid they would rerun bonanza like during the day on weekends and although i i I, I mean, I guess I would consider myself a fan of it. I've seen so many episodes of Bonanza just because back then you didn't have a lot of channel choices. Believe it or not, kids, depending on your age, we used to only have like three freaking channels on TV. TV went off at night. I told my daughter that. It's like it, it like one in the morning, two in the morning, the shit went off. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh man, I've got insomnia and this is not going to be good. This is really cool. So this is cool, cool Hand Luke, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, it's badass. It was interesting because the first photo reference shot that I saw of Bama, I swear I thought it was uh, Michael Douglas or Kurt Douglas. It looked just like him. Look at these. These are really cool. These are like little prints or something. And look, here's the crazy thing too. Bama, I saw a painting that he did just a few years ago. The dude did not lose his chops. He was fucking killing it like six years ago. Um, and he would have been quite an old man at that point. But he was still doing beautiful, beautiful paintings. And like I always say, please, please, please recommend, um, you know, where it can be a 10 minutes with, or if you have an idea for an influence chain where you go, oh man, you know what I would love to see is let's do like Norman Rockwell to Alex Ross to whoever, whatever, whatever your, your, um, idea is. It'd be really cool. 
again this this ripped clothes you're gonna see this in a minute in photo form and I actually have one little kind of surprise here this was nice so this is um, for a book cover I have two scans of this piece I don't know if they'll come up in order but um uh, one is a photo of the painting I believe with the notes on it um, and then the other is the actual painting itself but um, it's probably book cover a lot of times um, these illustrators they would either um, collect uh, accessories and clothing or they would go to um, like costume stores and rent them you know like where you would get maybe if you were doing a play um, and you needed you know World War II costumes or something like that just would really depend on the city and place that you live in New York probably would be doable if you lived in like some you know podunk town and somewhere else maybe not as easy I'd I do think that there's a costume shop in my city, but I've never I've never gone that far. I would maybe cobble together something if I really felt I needed it. This is cool. Again, um, this is off the original. I actually have the book cover, too. Um, I guess these are big weasels. I don't know. Weasels? <laughs> weasels. So this was interesting. This was a Munsters piece. I, it's very different kind of colors and stuff like that for him, but uh, I, I like it. I mean, I think it's kind of fun. But yeah, I don't know what that was done for. This is pretty cool. Look at this. So this is one of his more recent paintings. But, I mean, he just got freaking, like, crazy good. That is nuts. I always love how um, they paint this, like, weeds or, I don't know, is it hay, grass? Man, that is fuck, so cool. So this is from 78, so this isn't as recent. But I'm telling you, um, he was. I saw a piece was from 2015 that was excellent. It, really at the same level as that piece from 78. This is great. This was one of the last pieces that I found. Man, this is nuts. He's got a hand grenade? Looks like he's got a grenade or something. Pull the pin. Oh, he's got a couple. Look in his other hand. He's not messing around. And he's got some sort of, what do they call it? I guess that's just a knife. Man, that is crazy. That's one big dude. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, yeah, so here's some of the photo reference. These are beautiful photos. Now, that may actually be James himself. I'm I, That I didn't have time to research. But um, if not, um, he's a good model. I love the boots. But I love the big fold on the pants, too. But yeah, this is pretty badass. And the shirt's great. Ah, this is so Lee. It's funny, like, I mean, if you showed me this, and I would almost think it's a Lee Bermejo piece. Lee, Lee would get a little more detailed on it, but uh, that's funny. Bamejo. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, man, that's so cool. Be careful, buddy. You stand on those stools. You could fall down. Hurt yourself. Look at this one. It was kind of weird because a couple of these started to remind me of Travis's stuff from, like, like the last 10 years. Not the most recent stuff, but um, there was a point where it definitely looked like he was using more photo reference for things. He did, a, like, a Flash Gordon piece or something like that, and it was kind of had this vibe some of his star wars covers too i i got the impression that maybe he was modeling for them so if you get into people like that if you're a fan of rockwell or drew struzan or whoever it is i mean you're going to ultimately to get that level of nuance in things like folds and lighting on boots and whatnot I mean, you're definitely going to need to go to the source at least to learn the um kind of the little um you know, the little patterns and things that you might use depending on the light source. This was great, too. Found this right at the end, also. Man, the hand is great. Well, hopefully this appeals to people. Um, you know, I mean, there's, there's some videos that I do that I know won't get as many views as others, but who knows, it might surprise me. The Alex Gray video did way better on my channel than I ever thought that it would. I mean, it didn't do, like, crazy numbers or something, but, um, I mean, obviously they're all Alex Gray fans. They're just finding it on YouTube. They're probably not um, people that follow my channel, but uh, still, 
Um, you never know, but um, this was the this was the first photo that I saw, and I was like, man, it's a little like Kurt Douglas. It isn't, but man, he's a great model too. Love the pants. Suit slim. The one thing you got to watch out for when you use photo reference and stuff like this is this hand in particular will look very, very small in a, in a stylized drawing and also his head. His head would be teeny. It would look weird. It's because there's well, there's there's photo distortion going on that you don't really notice when you look at a photo like this. But basically, the the figure is foreshortening. It's wider and we're closer down here, and it's a little bit more small up here. And so, um, you actually have something kind of going to a vanishing point. But to, in a drawing, it's just going to look like the guy's got a dwarf head and little hands. So. You still need to know proportions. You trace shit. It looks weird. I, I, I see it all the time with people that use 3D models. They have no idea how weird their stuff looks, but it's like, it doesn't really completely translate. So it's interesting. This is a little different too, more colorful art direction and things like that. You know, you're working for a particular publisher and your art director wants a cer certain look. When you're doing work for hire, you know, you do what's going to get approved and get through the door. So you know, it's still a great piece, but I've just, it's a little more like blue and things. This, look at this. This is great too. So this is from 74. Man, he was crushing it when he went into this. He really, really, this is like Rockwell level shit, man. I love Norman Rockwell's stuff, to be honest. I've done, I think, at least one or two videos on his work, but I mean, he really is phenomenal too. That's yeah, great. It's interesting because he's got such a realistic look to the clothing. The hands, too, I think, actually look pretty fleshy. His face, though, is actually... I mean, it could be the scan. If I saw it in person, it might look different. But this this has a little bit more of a cartoony feel. Um, there's not as much... Um, almost like, um, like your skin usually has like oil on it. And so you would have highlights that would be a little more popping. Not not like ridiculous, but you can kind of see it like on his lip. But it, it's... Um, his it it's like almost like a translucency or something and this is a little more opaque meaning that it's um a little more mute okay so this was one of the surprise pieces i threw in so this is a tribute piece from an artist that i follow named dave dunston loopy dave i first saw dave's stuff on um deviant art and followed him and i was like man i don't know who this guy is but he's really freaking good but um uh, Dave did this tribute piece this morning. He posted it up, and I was like, "Man, that's pretty good timing." Because uh, I'm gonna do a uh, Bama video today, but uh, he's got the lighting. Dave knows his shit, man. Dave does. Um, I, it's he does a lot of like character um, car caricatures. They're really good though. He's so good. He's a great painter too. But anyway, I wanted to throw that in, and I'll have a link to Dave's um, Instagram account because you should follow him. He needs way more followers. So this is really cool too. And this this again, it's got a little bit of like a Wyeth vibe to me. The way that he approaches the trees. It's interesting too, because if you ever watched my Richard Corbin video, Corbin has got a few pieces that sort of have this vibe too. I think they were both um, probably influenced by, by um, similar things, but this is incredible, man. The leather and whatever they call this stuff, fringe, is it fringe? I don't know what they call that stuff. He's ready to go see Bon Jovi. <laughs> Ah, this is cool. When I saw this small, I thought he, he had um, put like a Dixie cup or something on there. I don't know, it may still be. I think it's just a toy pistol, but... He has hero hair. <laughs> this is cool. It's a very low-res scan, but I like the piece enough that I wanted to throw it in. This is cool, too. So we were, we're right at about 10 minutes... Um, I think we should probably wrap this up. I, I really, really try to keep these at 10 minutes. So. The Green Eagle of Death. Oh my god, it is the Green Eagle. I was just kidding. I didn't even know that was the title. I mean, you could put two and two together and probably come up with that conclusion. But, you know, sometimes things are not what they seem. I really like this piece a lot. 
the wrinkles on the clothes are fantastic and that's something that you don't really see in the photo reference and even the um the little bit of pleating that's going on in the fan pants fabric he he really does actually go beyond the reference because the the um the reference itself is fairly anemic other other than their beautiful photos and and um the lighting is great but the material here is way different um in terms of the texture on it um, and then the pants too. He really gave them that like this nice thick kind of woolly pattern. The um, the texture on the canvas really helps it through, and this is beautiful too. And that's the one that we saw the original, but the, it printed nice. I know, I just saved this just so I'd have it. All right, you guys have a great day. That's ten minutes with American illustrator James Bama. Rest in peace, James. And uh, you lived a long time, man, and you kicked ass for geez. 80 years, 80 years of kick-ass art when he was little. Curious how he was drawing then. But all right, you guys have a great day. Um, I'm still kind of waning on what I'm going to do for Super Fun Sunday. If I don't come up with a good idea, I may skip it. And then we'll just pick up on Monday because uh, I, I don't really have an idea for the video. And with Mother's Day, it's kind of like I'm running out of time. So all right, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.